All right. All right. God bless you. And good evening to everyone. Good evening to everyone. Well, until my guest arrives, I certainly um, will give an introduction and um, kind of give the basis of where we're going with this. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you what, I'm back home. <laughs> and um, it's good to be back home and to be able to breathe the air of Bermuda, see our beautiful waters, and just be home. You know, no matter how much traveling I do, um, there's no place like home. And so it's, it's good to be here. And my prayer is that um, you will certainly glean an understanding of perhaps what some folks are going through. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. But well, first of all, let me say this, <laughs> that one of the goals um, that we had through the last, I've been away six weeks, five days turned into six weeks. And I said, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to be do anything. I just want to get home. Then we'll do a lie. So right away, I want everyone to understand that Pastor Seaman had no intention at all for the last six weeks and for today to do a lie from an airport. And we did everything possible to make sure that nothing went awry. Because the truth of the matter is, is that the situation that the family is dealing with is enough. It's enough. And as I talk tonight, and then as we talk, if she gets on here, when she does, folks, even though it happened to us, it's not only about us. And I've seen some incredible things over the past month or so that have just made me a proud sister, first of all. <laughs> all right. Um, as tacky as I am, the business part, she's business savvy. And so therefore she was able to handle that. Here's one of the things I said. I said, let me give some scripture because I want that from what we share, you understand my heart. Many will miss it and that's okay. However, no one can doubt my experience because I experienced it. Well, you can doubt it, but it doesn't matter. I experienced it. And the overall feeling for me, before I go into a few scriptures before my sister comes on, was I'm from Bermuda. <laughs> you know, the friendly place. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I went 56 yesterday, yeah? And I'm like, hey. You know, I'm old school. And therefore, more than what we went through personally, I want to encourage us. I don't know if we can, but it's all I can do to be Bermudians. Not the modern Bermudian thing that's going on, uh, but to be the caring Bermuda that we came from. Some people would have this lie and what I went through to be about me or to be about us, but that would be selfish. And that also would make it easy for some of you to say, oh, it was about her. Well, if today hadn't happened, we were still gonna have a life because of some other things that we've dealt with concerning other people, because that's who we are. Um, so those who have spoken negatively, that's because that's in your heart. That's, that's disdain and hate and anger. And I can't do anything about that. One of the things, even as I went live, I said, you know, God help me in everything I say to honor the kingdom. And as much as I wasn't even angry because I'm too tired um, and, and I'm too much thinking on mom to be angry. It was, oh my gosh, I'm got to look after mom. How am I going to look after mom? And so... Again, I would beg of you not to think of Maria, 
pastor semen. Now, it does happen that I do speak on issues. And some people will never like that. And that's fine. This is not a PLP issue. This isn't an OBA issue. This is a Bermuda people issue. And if we can't get past that, if we can't understand that, we will continue to be antagonistic towards each other, which is an easy scapegoat because it's just an argument, fight, and cussing, and calling me names. And so, That's the easy way. Folks, that's so easy. The tougher thing to do is to self-reflect and say, let's, let's take a look at what's happening here and see, see how it can be better going forward. <laughs> Um, and that has to be a must. Um, checking on my sister, because I don't see her. Is your Nana on yet? No, bring your Nana in the room. <laughs> oh, boy. Restreams changed a little bit since I left. So I hope I, hope I um, she gets in fine. Amen. And so, um, yeah, so we're not going to make it about me. Because unfortunately, I think that's what happens. And it's just like the government, even though a certain percentage of the people vote them in, they really have to govern everyone. So let's look at this situation that way, that it's not about an individual family. It certainly can be, because there are many families who are involved. Oh, there she is. Hi, Al. And I want to present these scriptures, because I said God... Um, let me base it on your word, all right? I cannot be intimidated to being quiet. I cannot be intimidated uh, to having no opinion. I cannot be intimidated to staying behind four walls of a church. That's not kingdom. That's not the great commission. And so I'm just never going to do it. Do I like doing it? No. Would I rather be doing something else? Yeah. However, it's my responsibility to be consistent in who God has called me to be. Um, hmm. And it's been, it's been something. Anyway, let me get to scriptures. Let me get to scriptures. So I want to just share these three scriptures with you that I think are, now all scriptures beautiful. Um, let me read them, share them with you. Let's take a look. John 13, 34 and 35, it reads, I give you a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. People, I mean, I could stop there. It doesn't say if I love my own family. It doesn't say if it's just a us four and no more. You know, it says I got to go further than that. It doesn't matter if I'm tired, if I'm feeling sad or whatnot. I've got to do kingdom stuff. And um, so that's one scripture. And I just chose three. You know, I Google it. Boom, boom. You come up with three. <laughs> All right. Let's take. Oh, by the way, I'm not even seeing who's on the chat yet. Good evening, my manners. Thank you for joining me. And like, share, let somebody know that it's happening. And um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Romans 12 and 10. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing honor. And that's that's what I'm doing tonight. While it's fresh on my heart, fresh on my mind, the journey is fresh. Let me, let me talk about it. Let us talk about it. Because if not, we just forget and it just fades and something else goes on. All right. My final verse to share before I invite my sister on Philippians 2 and 4. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others. Now, bingo, <laughs> if you play bingo, um, really powerful verse there. And that's what we're doing. Ask God. I always tell people, you, you don't know who I am. Ask God about me because he'll tell you I'm just real. Real knows real. And if you're real, you know real when you see it. And so let me tell you a snippet of an intro of, of this again uh, as I'm getting ready to call my sister in. I'm a proud sister. <laughs> um, I, I watched her. You know, she's tinier than me. She's younger than me. But my goodness, she's got it together when it comes to this stuff. Oh, boy. 
and and she made me so proud and she helped her sister out and what i saw was wow wow the suggestions she had the things she did she'll share it with you and i'm saying and by the way we shared it with government oh, i shouldn't say we we might taking credit we she shared it with government officials to do what to make it easier for people who were going coming in before us and those that will come after us so don't think it's about mm -mm. no it's about it's about all of us and so i don't know where she's going to begin but i'm going to let her row and i'll interject and um again so so blessed to easily travel with my sister sister my biological sister five years younger and my sister in christ and so you know we prayed every day and it, that's beautiful that's beautiful so ladies and gentlemen uh hopefully i'm rocking this right it's been a while <laughs> here's allison oh there she is here i am um, my oh, brain, my brain. oh yeah well got our bracelets <laughs> i ain't going nowhere <laughs> I'm dying in a <laughs> All right. Um, so good evening, everybody. Glad to be back home. I can tell you that much. It's been a long journey. And I am going to start to push and show you that this was never about us. And this shouldn't even happen. Today was supposed to go perfect. <laughs> ah, boy, Satan really works hard. Um, when we first left Bermuda on May 10th, we had other family out there who were going through some stuff. So we were like the third group of a immediate family to be in Boston. We got there with mom. A four day trip turned into 42 days. We didn't want to be there. And I'm going to start by saying if King Edward Memorial Hospital was really a hospital as it was intended to be, many Bermudian families wouldn't be out there right now. It's, it's too many easy surgeries taking place in Boston. And it, it's really a shame. It is. And I'm going to be the advocate for people that have no advocate. And there were many that have been left behind. And hopefully and prayerfully, they get through. Now, I encountered one family as soon as I got there, a friend of mine. And um, they were having problems with their travel authorizations. And because I was traveling with my work laptop, because I have worked the entire time, if not harder, while I was out there. So I had my work laptop and I assisted a family with doing the authorizations because the front desk at the hotel is not their responsibility. They are assisting Bermudians, but it is not their responsibility. They are overwhelmed. People are getting angry at them like the Bermudian, and they're not. And trust me, they're doing a wonderful job at the Hyatt House in Boston. Let me give them the props. Michelle, um, Stephanie, Tiffany, Donna, these lot, they're truly helping Bermudians. They should rename the hotel Bermudia. But anyway, first family, that we had the easy authorizations, the, the one stappers, not too much issues. They came back pretty quick. Um, so they got home, they got the COVID test, everything was fine. Then we had an immediate family member who had to go through some stuff. Thank God we were there. And she got through, you know, these lot. I helped them out. In the interim, over the couple of weeks, I will be talking to families at Leahy and wherever we were. And people were stressing these forms. And I'm talking about, I call my super senior 75 and over to the point where I saw a couple that I believe they were in the late 80s, maybe even 90 yesterday, down at the front desk almost in tears because they couldn't figure out to do this. How do you do this? I, I barely figured out the phone. So how would you expect your, say, 90, 80, even your 75-year-old mother to fill out this form that requires attachments because it's been changed, and then you want your 75-year-old mother to sit there and watch and wait for emails to come back and forth because every time the email comes, it's wrong. I mean, our personal process took over 48 hours just for the travel authorization. The exemption was a whole nother ball game. I ain't getting into that tonight. I'm still dealing with that. So that's a later broadcast. The new travel form is a nightmare. And I pre-warned from your government about this. When I first got out there, I said, you need a 1-800 number. 
Who goes away? Not everybody goes out there and buys a SIM card. We bought SIM cards and we didn't even have long distance. So who is going to go away and say, oh, I'm going to have problems getting back into my own country and I'm going to buy a SIM card with long distance on it? Nobody does that. You have to focus on your loved one. You don't have time to worry about these things. You know, who puts in place a system without testing it straight through? You know, that that's one thing. I'm, I'm done systems at work. We test, test, test. We make sure it works before it goes live. I couldn't even sleep last night. I thought it was all straight. And in actual fact, the one that was at the airport that we presented was the last one we received. I came home, because you know me, Maria. I'm like, nah, I know I saw the date of birth somewhere. Yeah. Went to an earlier email, same number, different color, because now you got color codes. And the date of birth is on it. So why would they send us the one that's incorrect as the last one? Okay, yeah. fine. You know, I pushed at the airport. I work for Bermuda's airport. I know people. That's me. I'm fortunate. I know who to reach out to. You know, I mean, I was calling people. You saw me pacing. Anybody that saw that live, you know, I was on that phone. We had a wonderful doctor that came home with us. He allowed me to use his phone to call long distance. Finally, somebody at health called me back. But that's me. I had all these contacts. What would my mom have done if she was out there alone? Who would she have called? You know, a 1-800 number. I listened to um, HUT 102.7, Mr. Blakeney. Wonderful show, right? He's got a 1-800 number attached to it. You can call in. Why don't we have a 1-800 number? Why should anybody have to call long distance to come back home? That broke my heart. Four families down in the lobby last night trying to navigate all these forms. And you gotta use the business center because they're not like me. They're not travel with your laptop. Who, who's traveling with laptops when they're going to age medical? Very few and far in between. So it was never about us because we never thought we would encounter this. What did I keep saying? But you know, government should be paying and meeting ones of people I'm helping out here. People were like, I went on, I was getting ready to go see my mom yesterday. Waiting for my Uber, guy comes up to me. Allison, I can't get this done. I did as much as I could, and then my Uber came, and I told him, you only have two more steps. Prayerfully, he got it done. He, he was stressed, because, because when you've been out there on medical, the last thing you want to be worrying about is coming back to Bermuda. That's the last thing, and, and like Pastor said, you know, we prayed every day about this. We've been, we were working on that phone from Friday morning, pushing to get the um, approval, sending emails back and forth, back and forth, back and forth making calls, sending WhatsApp messages. Who needs that additional stress when you already have a loved one abroad going through stuff? And we're very, very, we keep our stuff, you know, our family stuff tight. So this would have never even had to be public. But I'm, I'm sure mom would appreciate the fact that while we were there for her, we were helping others. And I'm still getting people messaging me about, look, did I do everything right? Is, you know, what else do I need to know? before I come home. You know, I got a call from somebody leaving the island, petrified already, because, you know, oh, I got denied on this. I'm like, no, you write back to them and you tell them why A, B, C, and D. This shouldn't be happening. I'm sorry, there is no way this type of stuff should be happening in your land of birth. Yeah. I, um, I'm gonna say it, I, I said it, I came home once before, you did the 14 day policy. I'm been in a hospital, where are you where, where are I being to contract COVID? And by the way, read the test results in you know, were negative. So there you go, Bermuda, all negative. Um, you know, I'm not playing no more. I'm gonna advocate for people. This is wrong on so many levels. You know, um, we were hurt, disappointed, just celebrated pastor's birthday, you know, bringing mom home, don't like the circumstances we had to come in under, and then blame, checking in. No fault of our own. So for those people that thought that I didn't check the form, let me check you right now. Yes, I did. And the original one did have the date of birth. The last one sent to me last night did not. All we did was print what we had. And then surprise, we get to the airport and we notice that. But I mean, the, the exemptions had the date of birth. The passport has the date of birth, but I guess the passport ain't worth nothing either. But, you know, we had no intentions of, you know, putting our business on the streets. Thank you, Bermuda government. You helped, you know, you did it to yourself. Because 
I, I, I just can't believe what we went through today. And then yeah. you get on the phone and you're not even saddled. Oh, I um, Al, let me say and let everyone know. I mean, I, I just watched Allison. You know, I am constantly communicating with government. We had a Zoom meeting. That's right. We had a Zoom meeting. With people in government. That again, uh, strange treating you, treating you strange, like you're begging. Yep, begging, oh, and I, I'm very disappointed about that. And that's going to be addressed on another level. I'm, I'm going to ask for some meetings with my MP that I'm entitled to ask because I shouldn't have to go to a government department and make to feel like I'm a this big. Jeez. Okay, there's no way these new exemptions. Look, I was online this afternoon. The most days any country is asking you to quarantine is 10. So I don't know why we're on magic number 14, right? Some countries have even got, if you COVID test, we'll let you come out early. Well, COVID testing, why are we doing this to people? We don't even have Delta on a rampage, right? And I'm not claiming Delta because I do faith of a fair, okay? If you live right, you eat right, you take care of yourself, you'd be all right. Okay, we all know we have some people with health issues and we're very cognizant of that, but we need to be honest here too, okay? This is this is getting out of control because now we're getting more controlling when we were supposed to be being relaxed. And I'm not for the new regulations and I'm not playing. I'm not, I'm not, not uh, mm -mm, no, right? Because you could have tested me every couple of days because I ain't getting nowhere anyway, right? But to, but to do this to people, I felt like I was coming home to prison. And actually I've been home for the last couple of months anyway. So it's not that I don't mind being home, it's the circumstances, okay? Because I can't do everything I wanna do for mama. Oh, I'm sorry, is government gonna go out and run all my errands? Because my children work too, right? So, so it's a whole lot of levels to this and I try to explain this to government. It's not a cookie cutter approach for every family, okay? And that's the problem. You, It's not a one size fits all. What's sitting there if our mama after being in the airport from six o'clock in the morning? I'm on the carry go off. So why are we, you know, that it's bad. It's bad. And this cookie cutter approach is not acceptable. You got people breaking all sorts of rules, deal with them. Right? Punishing the whole country, not acceptable. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Because unless you lived it, he who feels it knows it. Right? God. I'm trying to save other people from going through it. I yeah. mean, I, I said to somebody this evening, I had to tell my sister, take a deep breath. It's going to be all right. That hurt. Okay? That hurt. There's no way we could have had to travel with my mama like that. No way. And I am not going to allow any government, I don't care who's in government, to do this to people that are hardworking, right? We do what we have to do. I hold my own accountable. This was unacceptable, and I'm not going to let it go like that. No. It's other people out there still got to get home, okay? Lots of families. No, I know a family that can't even get home. You know why? Because King Edward don't have a bed. And that would have been our situation. We would have had to stay in Boston until King Edward found a bed? Come on now. You know how much lay he cost a week? I'm not even going to tell you. You wonder why people have GoFundMe's? Okay? Future care? Oh, Lord, that's a whole nother story. I'm glad I'm, my mama didn't have it, but I have seen some stuff over these weeks. I have encouraged people. I have told them, look, the only, my strength's in the Lord. Okay, my strength comes coming from God. I, I couldn't do this on my own. I would have been broke down. You know, there's so many levels to this, and I hope some of my government officials are watching. Somebody take David Burt and Premier Burt. Feel free to... Kim Wilson, Minister of Health, because you lot are making decisions based on science only, and only half the science, because I, I don't see a balanced approach going on, okay? Call me on the table, whatever you like. I'm going to speak the truth, because the truth shall set you free. I am, I am, I am over, over this old, like I'm exhausted, and we still have mom to take care of, and I'm still thinking about people that are out there and can't get back home. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, no bad in King Edward. So no matter back for you. Stay in Lady. Family struggling out her to, to pay hotel and keep people out her. Hotel and food. 
That's an easy one. Fifteen hundred a week minimum. Money doesn't grow on trees. And um, somebody's got it. Like I said, I just feel like I'm being that voice. I guess God took us through this suffering season so, so that we could speak for other people. Because as much as I don't like, you know, what we have to go through, it's the human experience. But the human experience can be better if everybody works for the good of everybody and not just some. And the divide in the country is real because it is now the jabbed versus the unjabbed. Because until it's FDA approved, it's a jab. Straight up. I'm, I'm not calling it what it ain't. And there are, there are too many things going on in the world, right? So we need a balanced approach to everything. We need to look at our future generations. There are so much, you know, variables to this. And no, I'm not a scientist. That would be you. You're the biology teacher. But we, you can, common sense can look and say, hey, we need to take a step back. Because I didn't vote for this, straight up. I did not vote to be controlled, right? Especially when I've always obeyed the law. I didn't have one parking ticket in my entire life. I've been driving for like 30 years, 35 years. So, no. Okay, so just it's just not about us. I, I can't believe it happened to us. I thought I will show up. I had everything printed, two yeah. copies of everything. Oh yeah, and and and, and, and she can see that Maria, this y'all copy, you know. Yep. Uh, you heard paper, that. Paper. Paper, uh, well organized. So, th I, I want to say this: that if anyone believes that we did we did it on purpose, missed it on purpose, wanted to do a live, the devil is a liar. Don't you know. Believed a yeah, lie. The devil is a liar. All right. And anybody right. else that put their hand down? Really nasty. I had to block a couple of block a couple of people. I ain't just even playing with it because I know what we went through. And anybody that knows our relationship with our mother knows an uh, inkling of our passion for our mom. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't put our mom out there. No, we don't put her out there. And you know, you get to the contact the airline, they're like, wow, the Bermuda law says that if you don't have it right, we can't let you on the plane. And I'm saying to her, well, have you seen today's paper? She don't know what the RG is. If they're not getting an official something, something from Bermuda government, she don't care. They have been told that if the travel authorization doesn't have A, B, C, you don't let them on the plane. I'm saying, but remember, then when we, they let us through, we get to the gate, the guy doesn't even really look at the paper. He looks at her name and puts OK. Yeah. Come on. And, and I'm like, OK, wait a minute. If you're stating that the government has given you a um, document or whatnot, then that would mean the government would have to give another document to outweigh that or replace it. You can't send yeah. them to the Royal Gazette. Well, that and the fact that we can't really blame the airline. It's Bermuda government. That's what I'm saying. They're going it's like, this is what we have here. The box stops at Bermuda government. You know, and, and um, you know, so I, then you deal with all that, then you still got to come to the airport and, and feel like a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> stressed out and feeling like a criminal in my own country where I pay. Okay. All my taxes are paid. And and one of the things that, the fever. Yeah, yeah. One of the things we tend to do, Al, is um, you know, when we are coming to the airport, everything's okay, everything's okay. we pacify the situation to try to make the people mm -hmm. feel good so that you just forget it and move on. That's not how yeah. tell Rosie Parks that. Tell Dr. Mon, all the people we call heroes, they never pacify yeah. the situation. They so dealt with it enough. Them, what? No, they dealt with it not for themselves personally, but they considered people the principle of the matter. We get personal. I ain't got time to get personal with you. I'm I want exactly. this is crazy. I'm not traveling. <laughs> I'm not traveling anytime soon. So you think about me. This is we about the people that I saw last night when I was like, I'm leaving, and they're like. Oh, like I'm the concierge out there. No, I was helping people. But Bermuda government needs to do better. They need a concierge at Leahy instead of at the hotel, maybe, and every major hospital that we're dealing with to help Bermudians get home. Mm -hmm. Because you have some seniors that are traveling as senior couples. They're not traveling with their children. They're traveling as husband and wife. And, and it's scary. And this is white, black, and other. Because I encountered all. 
And everybody gets frustrated at the end of the journey because of the travel authorizations that are needed to come back to your land of birth. Wow. From you. And, and again, when you don't plan to go away and this comes upon you, I wanted to know, and I'm thinking, I'm saying, semen, semen, what's, what's missing in this? And I said to myself, I said, you know what, Maria, I think we have a lot of people in position. They don't have teenagers. They don't have 30 year olds. There's a level of compassion of motherly and fatherly understanding in some people mm -hmm. making big decisions. I have a 31 year old, you know, yep. uh, you, you got a 32 year old. We've been through some things where, you know, we're, we're trying to like make things easy, compassionate, understanding, not like, Oh, the microwave, zip, zap, zap, do this. Oh, all you gotta do is press a button, hit. What in the world? We're, this is, nope. we are Bermudians. You know, I, I, you know, I'm still on the flight next to the doctor, checking on mom, showing him pictures. This is where we live. This is Bermuda. You know, proud to come from Bermuda, but not proud today with what I experienced. Yeah. I'm very upset. And, and, yeah. and uh, truth be told, I'm the baby of the family. I know I'm the preacher, but. This was just like, woo, my hair was so tight yeah. every night for the last five. Tight, okay, test, mm -mm. travel this. How, how's it going? Ow, she's doing it. All right, thank God Allison's doing it. She's got it. And so, Jay, you're not even falling asleep. Some days we will wake up and we will have the same thought, you know, concerning mom or yeah. something. Because your mind, same conversation, just, same conversation you know, bam. Uh, because, it, again, not a cookie cutter. And why can't we be kind and caring for real, for real? You know, yeah. I understand there have to be rules and protection, but these situations that are not by choice, we need some choice people to deal with these situations because until it happens to you and you walk a mile, two miles, three miles, for example, weekends, the hotel doesn't have a shuttle. Oh my lord! Walk, walk to the walk to the lady. That's okay. You know, I walk. I'm thinking. I'm saying, God help me. You know, help us. What are we gonna see today? You know, so you're walking back and forth on that day. One day, I just walk in the rain. Whatever. Put on a plastic shower cap. Put your coat. You walk. You gotta walk. And this, but my mind's not fully there. It's like God. I'm praying. You know, you're praying. You're looking. So this, again, personal. We need all Bermudians to be considered when it's for emergencies. It's an emergency. It's not normal. It's not the run of the mill. It's a unique situation. And so we need some unique people who have a heart for the people of Bermuda. All the people. And I'm telling you, wow, I can imagine if things went well for everybody. We'd be like, I'm telling you, this is our country. Oh, mm -hmm. what? This sweet land of Bermuda. Um, yeah. I beg of our leaders to consider, to stop, to talk to us, to have the conversations, to yeah. seek God. This cannot be of God. What we've experienced and others have experienced, it's not kind. And I'm glad that I do have a platform. God knows he's given it because this is involuntary. And it's because of that that we can, as weary as we are, I say, Al, let's splash waters on our face and let's just get it done. Um, because we don't want to, yeah. well, we, we want to strike while the iron is hot, unlike the hotline yeah. that wasn't so hot. <laughs> How, how can you have a hotline? Planes are flying, but nobody can reach the hotline. I, I, I was like, oh, wow. Wow. The so consideration. Allison's call. Uh, we're both called on God all the time we're there. Called on God yeah. for the process. We know that he has the end of the matter. God sets people in place. He allows us to choose them. Mm -hmm. And then those people, if they are godly people, people with hearts have to say, God, like Solomon, wisdom, how this thing is too heavy for me as an individual. How do I treat the people of Bermuda, the precious people of Bermuda? 
until we get that type of a leadership, it's not going to all go well. I want it to go well because I'm not going anywhere. Bermuda's my home. That's it. And, and if and we can help, help, like we're on Mahalia Jackson saying it, if we can help somebody while we travel along the way, our living, our experience is not in vain. Um, yeah. Al, I don't know if you want to add anything else for tonight. Um, I'm thinking okay. at some point in the time, we'll probably come back again. Yeah. Um, um, I just want people to know that we, this was never our intention. We thought we had it all straight. Actually, we did have it straight. <laughs> no, we, we did have the right straight. information. Yeah. We did everything yeah. right. Um, but, you know, I left families out there concerned. It's going to happen again unless they turn this system off, which I doubt. But I, I would hope that the government and those who are watching and whoever will share this to TNN and everybody else, TNN, that they watch it and they understand that they need to, sometimes you have to make a change that you might've been wrong. Because from, from what, six weeks ago, I said about the 1-800 number. I also said in one of my emails, it's not a cookie cutter. You cannot deal with everybody's medical the same. And clearly, uh, if that information had been sent to parties in the health department or wherever, I would have thought some of those changes would have been made because we need help out there. People out there crying, and, and I'm not, that's not impressive. You know, um, I've got people coming back. I've got more family coming back. Nobody don't need no drama. We're already dealing with enough, you know, and um, we know God is always in control, but also we have to advocate, speak out against what is wrong. If not, we are not part of the solution. We are part of the problem. I'm going to be part of the solution. Amen. Amen. Uh, glad to know that. Glad to have seen you in action. It's just been something. And, um, you know, Allison, you were taking um, what you call screenshots. You got yeah. Screenshots mm -hmm. in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably have too many, but it's a good thing I was following that website change because people would act like it never happened. People wanted to know where I got their screenshots. They were there. It was on the Bermuda government website. I'm glad they changed it. That's one change that happened. You didn't have to pay $300. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm got the screenshot. So, um, you know, that was part of helping other people. I might be able to afford $300, but I've heard some people out there who don't know how they're paying the $75. Okay, that's real. Okay, everybody thinks Bermudians are rich. No, that's why we've got so many GoFundMe's. That's why we need to think about our decisions when opening up our country. I get it. You all don't want Delta. Well, I don't want A, B, C, or D either, but you cannot live in a bubble and fear forever because what you're doing is, I knew everybody saw the man's post about his vacation. Lots of people want to come, but are not coming. But okay, I guess we got money from somewhere. We don't have to worry about money in Bermuda no more. Okay, I don't want to hear nobody complaining about their grandchildren paying the debt because we all agreed that we shouldn't open Bermuda. I don't agree, right? Okay, it's a lot going on. We need to speak to it. And if my MPs are not going to speak till it's too late, come on now. Why do we vote for wow. people? Wow. Hey, I'm, I'm, I think that's another thing. The back bench don't have to be this silent. I don't understand it. They're not that silent when they want your vote. Nope. Come on, why is everything got to be done in secret? Why can't we just have honest people so that we can get somewhere. Uh, and this is why, this is why people and politicians ain't honest. Because when you need them the most, everybody's ducking breeze, like they're riding their bike down the stretch. Wow, man. I'm like, you what? Speak, you speak out the night before almost something's coming into place when in actual fact it was already in place. They were just, you know, tweaking stuff. And remember, I was on the phone and the guy was telling the guy what to do. So it still weren't working on Saturday. Yep. My sister was on the phone, let's be clear, and getting them to check certain things on the government site. Okay? So, so you all didn't fill in your forms. Excuse me, we probably helped to adjust forms so that they're better than they were a month ago due to my sister. And so, come on now, government MPs, come on. Come on, even the person that didn't vote for you, you represent them now. Come on, this is the way it has to be. It ha this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm expecting 
Now, am I going to be disappointed? I don't know, but I'm expecting to hear politicians that have a lot to say on a lot of different, don't stop me, on a lot of different topics. But when we're dealing with life and death, near life and death, stress upon stressful situations, there is virtual mm -hmm. silence. What yep. in the world? What are we teaching our younger generation? What kind Did of? Anything? Not my child. My children, no. You don't, you don't just follow the crowd. No, we make decisions. We use godly wisdom. Okay? And this country needs some godly wisdom. I'm serious. I, I ain't never been through such a stressful 42 days in my life of a trip we weren't, didn't even want to go on. We pushed it back. Okay, we, we, we had discussed that we weren't traveling till maybe next year, maybe next year. So we didn't even want to go nowhere. We were willing to take a Bermuda staycation. I like my room. So this, this, weren't, this weren't about traveling. This weren't about us. This was started about our mother and it will end always with our mother for us. But it's the bigger picture that we encountered along the way that just ain't right. Bermuda, we need to get it together. We need to wonder why we're having problems for God. Mm -hmm. and, I, and as we close, I'm going to say a phrase, spiritual warfare. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Some may not get it, but I'm going to say it. Bermuda is being tested to the core now with what spirit will you allow to filtrate through the meander? and filtrate through the whole island. Is it a spirit of power? Is it a spirit of dictatorship? Is it a spirit of my way or the highway? Or can it be, I know, the Bermuda, I know, my mom knows, knew. You matter, you're my neighbor, you do matter. Love thy neighbor. What about a train in the, in the next generation? We wonder, and, and I would listen, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Here we don't you recognize that in the last two months we've had all sorts of strange deaths and accidents? Because a spirit is being allowed, and I'm coming against that. Some will get it, some will Jesus. We've stopped caring, we've stopped loving, we've stopped reaching out and extending in care of our people. That's a spirit. And just like I'm the leader of Shekinah and the spirit flows down, shout out to Shekinah, you did excellent. There's a leader in Bermuda and that spirit flows down. And my heart's prayer is that it is heard by our premier. I said our premier. And that he is touched to the core of who God made him to be. And that things change for the better because I don't dislike or hate anyone. When I see something that is wrong, I am prompted by the Holy Spirit to provide a platform and speak to it. And so Allison, thank you for no this problem. tonight. No problem. And um, we'll chat in the morning. Absolutely. Try to get night your night. rest, please. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you second night. And um, Let's see what God's going to do. All right. Let me just say shout mm -hmm. out even before you go, Al. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of folks that are tuned in and they have been commenting. Thank you, everyone. Every one of you. I appreciate you. And I thank you for taking our time. Many of Shekinah Worship Center and then some of our friends. Amen. And some folks that have considered it not robbery and say, let me hear what these sisters are saying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's keep our Bermuda in prayer. Let's keep our leadership in prayer because as the leadership mm -hmm. goes, so goes Bermuda. And so we need to do better. All right, Al, thanks yep. much. Love you to life. And um, no problem. We'll you see you. thanks. We'll see you in the A of the AM. I'm just going to say bye yes, to the we, You know, via, via WhatsApp. We won't see you. We'll see you via WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, right. WhatsApp, yes. Because you got a video call, Mama, and Daddy's got a video call. Anyway, bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Love you to life. <laughs> Love you too. Amen. Amen. All right. So, folks, um, 
thank you. Thank you for tuning in and um, continue to keep us in prayer. I surely would appreciate it. We've not lost our faith. We believe that God has even given us this as another mountain to perhaps reach out and help others. And that's what we're going to do. All right. Each of you, thank you again. I'll give all your love to mom. <laughs> and um, blessings abound, folks. Blessings abound. Good night. Love you to life.